doctors at the J Flowers Institute right here in Houston say they can fix your brain frog, even more significantly treat serious illness by combining neuroscience with medicine and technology. Anchor Chauncey Glover here to explain this one, Chauncey. Yeah, and Gina, we have all been there. It's called neuroengineering, and it promises to fix the deficiencies in your brain. Right now, Houston is the only city in the country where you can get this kind of brain mapping that's being used by NASA, pro sports players, and Olympians. I've been trying it out for myself uh, to find out the activities I really excel at and what I don't. But it's how this technology is giving hope to people with brain injuries, kids with severe autism, and even those battling addiction that really got me interested. Even just having a conversation with you, looking you in the eyes, is something that I never would have been able to do six years ago. Just looking at 30-year-old Julia Solomon, you would never know. Towards the end, I would start my day with I mean, about 60 milligrams of Vyvanse. She spent more than a decade struggling with addiction. I guess my first drink was actually at age 14. Um, which I tried everything a bit more than once, I'll just say that much. Um, towards the end, it was a lot of uh, stimulants, so cocaine, Vyvanse, Adderall. Julia told me she lived the typical goody two-shoes life growing up, but at 17, her Lyme disease resurfaced and doctors gave her Oxycontin for the pain. Within two weeks of being prescribed it, I was um, crushing it up and snorting it off the back of the toilet at work, which is, you know, disgusting and um, made perfect sense at the time. Julia spiraled out of control and at 21 she did her first stint in rehab. That would start the cycle of Julia in and out of treatment programs becoming a chronic relapser. But I just was not a I wasn't ready. B my brain just was not functioning at a level that would allow me to stay sober. And Julia's brain is what her parents tapped into for help. Karen Odell Barber, the chairman of Neurologics, took her case. Her family was yeah. tremendously worried about her that she would um, overdose or die. Julia underwent brain mapping with Neurologics here in Houston at the J Flowers okay. Institute. I want to help people from an addiction standpoint and from a mental health standpoint so that they don't end up like my family did. James Flowers is the founder and for him it's personal. And then I have a sister that died of addiction who fell off of an eight-story balcony high on cocaine and she had been in 19 treatment centers and and was not successful because no one ever really took the time to understand what her comorbid diagnoses were. And that's why he uses Neurologics. It combines neuroscience and medicine with technology to brain map. Technicians use a cap like this one and attach it to your scalp to capture the impulses of your brain. After a two-hour drill, testing your memory, learning, and more, a report is generated highlighting the areas of dysfunction. When I got my brain map back, it showed that I just had zero impulse control. Um, when I was uh, under stress, my IQ decreased by 50 points. So when I was feeling stressed, you know, in those moments where you're about to drink or use, I just was not functioning properly. Like I wasn't able to make good decisions. But through neuroengineering, which fixes the problems in your brain through months of hands-on training and drills, Julia was able to get her IQ up during stressful times, which in turn helps her make better decisions when it comes to drugs and alcohol. Being able to produce that kind of evidence and hand it to somebody, it's, it's powerful in a different way. The sessions are about 50 minutes and it could take up to four months for your brain to come back to peak performance. For someone with a traumatic brain injury, it could take six months and 12 months for severely autistic children. I wouldn't trade my life right now for the world. Six um, years sober, Julia has sort of become the poster child for brain mapping and neuroengineering. She graduated college with a degree in illustrations and is now in L.A. making movie posters. Now she wants to help others battling their addictions. I've seen it help so many people and it sounds like magic when you talk about it. Um, and it is, it is. I think we're at a point now where science can really help addicts. 
And congrats to Julia for staying sober and doing the work. Right now, brain mapping and neuroengineering is quite expensive, but doctors are hoping that will change as more and more people use it and it gets more mainstream. So does it really work? I've been taking the two hour test, figuring out memory activities and doing the drills. The mapping identified my memory is clouded. The doctor said it could be a link to having COVID back in March of 2019 and losing my smell. Well, I received all of my equipment in the mail. I spend an hour three times a week with my coach. Now I'm in two weeks into my optimization training designed to fix the weaknesses found in my brain. I have another month or two of optimization left. Of course, I'll have an update for you coming up in November, but who knows, by then, I may be smart enough to run this place. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you'd want to. Right. <laughs> I just want to be smart enough, too. But I will say, after some of the drills and the optimization training, I am starting to see a little more alertness. That's what I'm going okay. through right okay. now. So I'll do three of these uh, every week for the next few months. So. But Chauncey, did you realize your memory was faulty going in? I did, I did. Uh -huh. I, and, and I had already talked to my doctors about post-COVID, and uh, that was one of the things that they were looking into saying people weren't as you know as, as sharp after having COVID so uh, and this doctor was able to kind of you know look at that and, and, and tell yeah this technology is very intriguing Chauncey yeah. great first-hand account right there thank you